Today we're on the trail reviewing the Money Bikes La Roca. All right, so immediately when you sit on this bike, you feel the geo. Very different from the other bikes I've ridden. This, the head angle feels really good. And even though I'm not usually a fan of 160 forks, it works on this and I like it with the 27.5 plus. The geo feels like the numbers we measured. Reach is very short, which makes it comfortable for all day pedaling. But when I stand up over the bars like this, I have to back up and ease my weight back a bit. Otherwise I feel like I'm about to go over the bars. It's very short in the reach, which is just fine once you get used to it. But for steeper stuff, I definitely prefer a longer reach and I'd probably size up to the medium. That said, I know a lot of you love shorter reach bikes that are more comfortable. A lot of people tell me I don't like long reach bikes. It puts too much pressure on my hands and shorter reach bikes often take weight off your hands. Now on Shell's personal bike, he's running odd money bars, which have like a 70 mil rise, something like that. And they're nice and wide. And that brings the stack up. And I like that position. Feels like a beach cruiser. Howdy. Feels super comfortable. This feels pretty racy with this flatter bar on here. I would like it a little higher. So yeah, I think I'd run a 50 to 70 mil bar on a La Roca. That short rear end is so fun. This bike has a really nice ride feel. Yeah, it's just real compact and BMXy. And if you remember from Shell's first look comments, he likes a shorter wheelbase bike. And this definitely has that short wheelbase feel loves to change direction and whip around corners. But because of that slack head angle, it doesn't feel nervous. Pretty cool. I do feel like it's tucked in in the front and on really steep sections, I feel like I have to adjust my technique or I'll go over the bars. It hasn't happened, but when you ride long bikes for a long time and hop back on a short one, you notice it immediately. So yeah, you feel that shorter reach, you feel the slower stack, but I think a longer stem with some of those odd money bars, man, that'd be a great comfortable setup on this thing for me. I also think this thing would be an exceptional bike packing bike. It's real tame. You don't have to fight it to ride it. You just kind of relax, stop thinking and just let it do what it's designed to do. Yeah, that slack head angle gives it a lot of confidence. I just have to ride off the back instead of over the front a little more. Once you adapt your riding style, you get used to it. And let's be honest, this is the riding style most people are used to. So if you struggle with longer, slack, super steep seat angle modern bikes, something like this will be a breath of fresh air for you. And the seat angle works. like. I feel like my effective top tube is just where I want it. It does have a propensity to lift the front tire a little more on steep, punchy climbs, but that also means it's super playful on the back wheel when you're going downhill. <laughs> I think this might be the easiest bike to get into a manual that I've been on. Yeah, when I get up out of the saddle and get over the front and sprint, the wheelbase is just a tad short, but you get used to it quickly. So I think I would size up to a medium unless I was doing a bike packing only bike. Then I'd stay on this small. I love how versatile this bike is that you can run it with a rigid 120 mil fork. You could run it with a 140 mil 29er. You can run it as a 27.5 plus. You can run it as a 29 by 28 that's pretty amazing got sliding dropouts for single speed you got three water bottle bosses that don't interrupt the seat tube 
And on the new V3, you've got that lower seat tube for a longer dropper. That's really cool. I think this bike is gonna suit a lot of people that aren't trying to race enduro or get the absolute fastest XC times on a trail. Just attention to detail is amazing. I love the sliding dropout design. I love the aesthetic. It's a work of art, not just a quick mass produced frame to make as much money as possible. And you can tell that Shell has worked really hard with these guys and that these guys know what they're doing to create a frame that's not only beautiful, but great to ride as well. So who's it for? This bike's for people who want a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. It's a comfortable bike for all day, days on the saddle, but it's not twitchy or sketchy in the slightest. It's for people who are sick of bikes getting longer and longer and slacker and lower bottom brackets. It's for people who like to corner. Shell knows how to play on a bike and how to design a bike to play. Man, I've never found a bike that wants to get on its back wheel like this. That's so fun. Solid bike, super stable despite its short wheelbase. That's fun. This wouldn't be my first pick for an enduro hardtail, but that should be no surprise to anybody. Boy, Shell's designed a heck of a bike. This thing is such a joy to ride. Reminds me a lot of the Sherpa. Wants to get on that back wheel. It manuals even easier than the Sherpa. Hello. Thanks you guys, appreciate it. Yep. Enjoy. I love that it can be made single speed, so cool. Coaster brake if you wanna get weird. This bike is not for someone looking for an XC race bike, though you could definitely race XC on it. If that's your primary function, there are better suited bikes. But man, what a great all rounder, especially if you don't want a super long wheelbase. This thing turns on a dime. So if I were to get one of these, it'd probably be a medium and it'd be a 29er with a 130 mil fork. Oh man, I'd probably run two threes on it because this frame is not harsh. Yeah, I'd probably run some light wheels, two threes, maybe have a backup set up with two eights, 29 by two eights for bike packing or general partying. But man, I know a lot of you guys love 27.5s and this bike works really good as a 27.5. Oh, if you love slaloms and cornering and yeah, tight corners, this bike slaloms like nothing else. It's been such a joy to meet Shell and see his beautiful handcrafted bikes. If you're interested in one of these La Rocas, there's a link to it in the description below. I can't think of a better guy to support with your money than Shell. What a great builder, great rider, and great human being. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to ride and review this awesome bike and get to meet Shell and hear the story behind his brand. What a fun bike. It is so playful. It just begs you to get on your rear wheel and party and play and manual and pop off of things and jump. If you've struggled to be able to learn manuals with this bike, it won't be the bike's fault if you can't learn them. They are so easy to just initiate and that balance spot is huge. If you guys are interested in this bike, there's a link in the description below. I love Shell's approach to building, approach to riding. He builds rad bikes, he has a rad company, and he's an incredible human being. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.